sound like an echo. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to The Rock, where we thank God every day. Hey. Ding. I like that. I was on cue. Ah, yes, it is a wonderful day. It is. Some of you have off, what, school and work and with it being the holiday weekend and yeah, it's a good family time. And God, we thank you so much for our church family. Lord, and our family keeps growing and growing and growing. And Jesus, we thank you so much, God, for people hearing the calling and the, the hunger to want to know you more. And as we get into this world that seems like it's becoming godless and fearless in all the wrong ways. But Jesus, you're calling revivals around the nation. In the same population, Lord, that we are seeing the lost and the confused, God, you're calling their hearts to you once again. And we thank you for that. God, if our hearts aren't turned to you today in here, Lord, that we are just asking Holy Spirit to pull on those strings because, God, you are wonderful and amazing and joyful. And we thank you so much for everything. Amen. Amen. Uh,
just invite you here. We ask you to have your way and do whatever you want to do. We thank you for speaking to each of our hearts, Lord. We just love you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be
making so pretty this morning. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon, for being here today. We appreciate you. <laughs> so cool and awesome. We yeah, happy Labor Day it. weekend, everyone. We're glad you guys came out to church today. It's always exciting. We never know on a holiday weekend, you know, like, is anyone even going to show up? <laughs> so I'm proud you of you guys. You never know what you're going to get. You, you never know. That's it's like for sure. a box of chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome sunset. to the Rock Church, where our mission is helping families. Changing, changing lives, lives through the awesome, amazing love of Jesus. And we have had a fun-filled, outreach-filled summer. And I thank you, all of you that have been part of that for serving and yes. loving our community. It was amazing. I, the backpack giveaway last week, I don't, I mean, there had to have been like 500 people there. We gave away all, a lot. all our 100 backpacks and then Until the Whole World Knows gave away all theirs. Um, I think they took some names to give out more, and it was great. It was a great crowd. It was we had a very a good day. Yep. So and you guys helped you. make that possible. Absolutely. So it's th awesome. So thank you for giving. We appreciate we you. We do appreciate and it. And the community appreciates you. And that was uh, in Vanderrift. If you didn't hear about it, we were in Vanderrift at Kennedy Park. So lots of kids down there who needed school supplies. And they also won lots of cool prizes, too. So it was And they got fun. haircuts because they were doing yeah. haircuts and... That well, was awesome. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It was a pretty good day. God was, was good. It was great. So thanks I think for that's why the Bible says two are better than one and three fold cord is not soon broken. Yeah. Right? So let's all the churches and do work more. together. It would be more. awesome if all the yes. churches would work together. <laughs> yes, it would be really cool. Uh -huh. God's good all the time. And yes. yes, and if you're new today, my wife has made this fabulous QR, co QR uh -oh. code. So we were having some issues earlier, and maybe we're going to keep having issues, but that's okay. God Let me see good. if this is going to work. Uh, you can just type in the words yourrock.org, and you can still go to our website. Um, or if you're new and I haven't chased you down yet to get your phone number, right, Josh? <laughs> I will chase you down. And it's okay if you don't want to give me your information, but I will continue chasing you down. I'm relentless. No, I'm just kidding. I actually love connecting with people, and that is why I do it, because I want to have the opportunity to have that relationship to text you back and forth and answer any questions and give you updates and things like that. So please text me back. If you are on our church family list, then you would have gotten a message this week about any questions you have. So today is going to be answering question Sunday. It's going to be kind of fun. We had lots of great questions, like all, all over the place. Like and we some, thought our clicker was working, but it's died again. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. Just that kind of day. God's good. At least good. we have Logan. Thanks, Thanks Logan. Logan. You the man. <laughs> All right. Good to have a tech team. We appreciate yes, that. Yes, we do appreciate that. So if you want to give, you can also give at yourrock.org, or you can give by cash or check in the little green box. In the boxes little green box. The, back. So the little green box. God. The little green box. Whatever. God. Sorry, I had to say that a few times to get him that cue over there. Whatever. Wait, wait. Hold on. I'm ready for the next one. Oh, no. <laughs> Look out, Logan. So whatever God puts on your heart to give today, that's what we want you to give. We don't pass an offering plate or anything like that. Absolutely not. We want you to be cheerful givers who give because you're like, yeah, I want to be part of the work that's happening at The Rock Church. Yes. You and then right. we've got the fabulous She Is the Conference she coming is up. The She Is Conference is coming this up. This is an opportunity Woo! for you to chase your wife away and make her find Jesus. Yes. Isn't that what it's for? Absolutely. If Good. You I mean, or you can also watch the kids for your wife so she can go, and that is a blessing. We moms appreciate having a few days away to focus on Jesus. <laughs> so the She Is Conference is at Summit Church in Indiana. They do a fabulous job of women's ministry over there, which is one of the reasons I've never, I've never had any desire to start like a whole new women's ministry because they do so great. And it's only like, you know, a half an hour. So this is a whole weekend. There's two whole weekends, actually. So September 19th through the 21st, and then again on the 26th through the 28th. So we have a group of women going on the 26th through the 28th. But that one is sold out. If you want to go, I have two tickets available for $55, which was like the early bird group rate from last year. And two of the women that signed up can't make it. So 
if you want those tickets or one of those tickets, let me know. I'll connect you to the person that has the tickets. Or if you want to go on the 19th through the 21st, you can go to their website and buy tickets there, and they're doing an additional $20 off this weekend. It's like a Labor Day special, so that ends tomorrow evening. And if you're a single mom, I think the single mom price for the weekend is $65, and then there's $20 off that, so it would only be like $45, which is amazing for a three-day conference. And if you're a single mom and you can't afford it, we'll buy it. Absolutely, yes. Just let you know that. <laughs> yeah, and they have scholarships there too, but we will absolutely pay for you to be able to. And I just want to say this, if you're a mom and you can't afford it, we'll pay for it. Yeah. Because we believe in people getting changed by the power of God. Yes. I'm still praying that Bethany finds Jesus there. Every time. He's always just praying for me. And if I keep always, praying hard enough, it might happen someday. There's always more Jesus for me, and I love it. I've not, yes. I've never arrived. I even last year I brought my mom, and she's 80, and it was awesome. Like, and my mom learned so much, and she bought some of the books from the speakers, and she just, she had a great time. So it's not, it's for all ages. It's they even, you know, teens are invited to come too. Yep. Um, and God is good. So is. if you want to do yeah. that. Husband's great time to get rid of your wives. Maybe they'll come back, change, find Jesus. <laughs> if it says set free. Uh-huh. That's so the I'm theme. Hoping. She is set free. All right. That's good. That's it's what I was praying time for. To live in freedom. God's good all the time. All the time God's good. My clicker's not working. George. Oh, there it goes. I got oh. it now. Did you do that or I did that? I did it. Oh. Yes. So I want to tell you about Shalakta. We've been working on Shalakta Church. We're opening a Shalakta, you know, church in Shalakta. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it's going to be open by I don't know when. But anyhow, just wanted to show you what we've been doing to it. So we this week we started busting all the block out, which this is, is really front, awesome. This is going to church. be the main door, new main door. So we've had to break through the block. Um, it only took seven hours, <laughs> so to get to there, and it was a good thing. My hands are sore and my body was a little tired the next day, but we're getting there slowly but surely. Holy smokes! It took off there, back up there. Way one more back up. All right, one more back up. I don't know what happened. My switcher is not working okay. again. Anyhow, so we put in a new stage. We got a new door put in. That door was actually one of the ones that we got off of the building they were tearing down. Yeah, that strip. So mall that's in like Indiana. a $1,500 door that we got for free, which is really awesome. That makes me smile all the time. Free door. And I get happy with that kind of stuff. Um, we're working there, just to let you know. People say, when are we working? We're working Wednesdays from 4 to 7. Normally, yeah. I'm usually there around noonish. Mm-hmm. And Thursdays, I'm usually there around noonish. And all that kind of good stuff. And I stay till 7 o'clock. And also on Saturday, we start at 8.30. And it all depends when we run out of things to do. Like this week, we kind of ran out of things to do. Um, But it's okay. It's a good thing. If you know how to do plumbing, I need plumbers. And I need electrician type people who know how to run wires. And do all that kind of stuff. That's where I'm getting to now. So if you know how to do that, I know how to do it too. But if other people know how to do it, that's fantastic. If you don't know how to do it, I can probably teach you how to do it. Uh, if you can learn, unless you can't, then I'm sorry, but <laughs> God's still good. you can carry stuff back and forth, or you can yes. run to the store, because that happens a lot. Yeah, especially when you're doing plumbing, you can guarantee it's at least three trips to the hardware yep. store before mm-hmm. you're done, maybe Absolutely. four or five or six. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. But anyhow, if you'd like to help, that'll be opening, hopefully, in the near future. It's kind of a really cool place. It's almost starting to look cool now. We put all the windows in now. Yeah. We're going to have that door cut in, and we'll be putting sidewalks in and building a roof out over the entranceway and doing a lot of cool stuff. So it's going to be neat, and it's going to be amazing. All right, so then we've got Back to Church Sunday. Woohoo! So this is actually a national day. It is. National Back to Church Sunday. This year, it's September 15th, and we are bringing it to your attention so that you can invite your friends and family, people that might normally be sitting in these seats next to you, but you haven't seen them all summer. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong. Last week or it was over here. It was, yes. We this we week it's over time. here. I, I don't know if someday it's going to be all right. <laughs> if we were a ship, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> I'm just saying, we'd have a, kind, a little bit of a lean in the water today, but it's all good. We're yes, glad you're here, and we we're glad are. you're sitting here. Absolutely. But this is an opportunity for you to say, hey, we haven't seen you for a while. It's time to come back to church. Or maybe you have friends that have never been to church their whole lives, and you can be like, hey, it's National Back to Church Sunday. There's going to be a whole bunch of people there who haven't been there in forever or ever. So come on out. So there's flyers that I made up on the Welcome Center if you want to just hand it to someone that you know and invite them to church. This is your opportunity. And we always tell people, come to the rock as you are, really. 
We mean it. We and do this, mean that. What the flyer says, you can come broken, weary, messy, and experience life, hope, and love in Jesus. Like, that's what we're here for. Absolutely. As the, the body of Christ, like, we want to love everyone. We call ourselves the island of misfit toys for a reason, because most of us came from yes. lots of crazy, broken places. A lot of messed up but lies, but you know what? God Jesus uses us for the kingdom of God, and that's really awesome. If you yeah. look at the Bible, the Old Testament, there was a lot of messed up people in there that God used a lot, and I thank Absolutely. God for that. And I'll be posting things on Facebook, too, inviting people, so share that. Share it to a certain friend, you know, like, and say, I'd love to see you at church. Will you come sit with me? <laughs> Absolutely. See if my flicker is going to work or if I'm going to have to give this back to Logan again because I'm not having much success here, Logan. Ah, there we go. If I turn it off, turn it on. Do me a favor. Go back and get me triple A batteries. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, we well then don't do that. We tried that. All right. So we're going to. So anyhow, we sent out a text message saying if you'd yeah. like to have questions. We figured it was Labor Day weekend. We didn't know how many people would be here. So we decided to send out a text message and see what kind of questions people have. I like doing this kind of stuff. I like it whenever people ask questions and say, kind so what about and yeah. what about, what about. And mm -hmm. I don't know. When I was in church just starting to walk with God and talk with God, I had a lot of questions and I didn't get very many answers um, because it, they frowned upon questions, but I don't frown upon questions. I, I thank God for questions. And we probably won't get to all the questions. No, we so probably won't. So if yours didn't get answered. Don't be I'll, offended. Yeah, but you can text me again and be like, hey, you didn't answer my question. Can you answer it? Yes, we and can I do that. Absolutely, do we can do that. So. First one we got this morning is... These aren't in any order. Either. No, they're not in any order. It's just I took some that kind of went along with each other and stuff yeah. like that. So this was the first one we got. How do you know something is from God or that he's speaking to you? And I think I get that a lot. Mm -hmm. Especially How do I know this is from God? maybe newer people and stuff like that who just started walking with God. And I guess the best thing I can tell you to do is this right here. And this is called a sifting rake. How many know what a sifting rake is? Maybe you never saw one before. It's something you slide through, and the little things fall out, and the big things stay behind. You can and use it for finding shark's teeth. Yes. Can you? Yes. Oh, my goodness. I never tried that before. So when we go to the beach, I need to go find shark's yes. teeth. Yes. You need a All sifting right. It's rake. awesome. I'm going to be the sifter. No, really, seriously, I think one of the best things we can do in our lives is really, truly, honestly, beyond a shadow of a doubt, sift it. <laughs> that's what you can do. All right. It's just going right. to gonna gonna take it. a little bit to get there, but we're going to get there. I'm still going to throw it at it if it's what's God. But no, seriously, and how do you sift it? Well, it's really easy. You go into the Word of God, and you check whether it's biblical or not. And I've, I've learned this with people. You've got to learn something. We like to be lazy. Let's just be honest. It's true. So it's so much easier to ask someone else than it is to do the homework. And I encourage yes. you to do the homework. You see, because in your life, you're going to be in relationships. And I don't just mean in like marriage relationships and that kind of stuff, dating relationships. I mean, you're going to have business opportunities. You're going to have financial decisions. You're going to have all kinds yeah. of decisions in your life that are going to take place where you need to know whether what God would want. Well, if you're walking with God, if you don't yeah. care, well, then good luck. But this and you're going to make this know. person wants to know. So you need to sift it. So you go into the Word of God, and mm -hmm. or you seek wise counsel if you don't know. Mm -hmm. And wise counsel isn't asking everybody till you get the right answer you're looking for. No. Wise counsel is finding somebody who you know knows the Word of God and saying, this is what, um, like one of the things that I did whenever I, I went into my business the first time, uh, it would have been easier for me when I started my business because I worked for a company, a Fortune 500 company, and they said, you can start your own company and go out and hire your own employees and blah, blah, blah. And I was all excited because I always wanted to work for myself. And I remember sitting there trying to convince another co-worker to go with me because it would have been easier. Hmm. But because, what did God say about that? Well, he just went straight into the Word of God, and the Word of God says, make no covenant with a sinful person and doesn't have your heart. And basically the reason God says that is, and I realized that he would have never wanted to give away money like I wanted to give away money because one of the reasons so I wanted true. to start a business was I wanted to be a giver. Yeah. And I remember one year, and I'm not bragging about it, but this was 1996, 7, 8, 9, 10, somewhere around there. Um, I remember one year I was, had the blessings where I was able to give away like $13,000. And I know that if I had a business partner, and I know that doesn't yeah. sound like a lot now, $13,000, but back then you could buy a lot of gas for thirteen thousand dollars, just a dollar a gallon. I'm two thousand. Yes. Just let you know. You and I remember money. sitting there and going, I was really glad that I didn't mm -hmm. have that person in my life because I couldn't do it. 
So we've got to be wise. And it's amazing how much the Bible tells us about finances. Mm -hmm. It's amazing about how much God yeah. tells us about life and marriage. Mm -hmm. And you name it, it's in the Bible. And it really is there. You just got to find it and do the homework. Yeah. And I'm just going to encourage you to say this. You know, it's really cool. A lot of people don't like Google, but I can literally Google scriptures on Google. Yeah. It's not blocked yet. Just telling you, okay? And Yay. you can type in there things like literally, what's the Bible have to say about blah? And mm -hmm. it'll bring up a whole bunch of Bible studies or scriptures. Yeah. And it's really cool. I've probably used Google more finding scriptures to build my messages now mm -hmm. than I do my Bible program because it's faster. It is. And that might sound crazy, but I literally can type it in there and it knows it's smart enough to know what I want to look for. My Bible program is not always smart enough. It's it's smarter than me, I guess, is my problem. But anyhow, so you got to sift it, and that's how we all need to start. Is Absolutely. And find counselors in your life. And I don't mean counselors in the world. I mean people sitting around you who you have respect for that you've watched their life and ask right. them questions and sit there and reach out to them and say, what's God say? And when God says it, listen. <laughs> I have to say that. How do I know? Because I didn't lots of times. Anyone else here not listen whenever you knew what God wanted? Yeah. If some of you aren't raising your hand, you're going to have to repent later, but it's all good. All right, so you got to sift it. And the next question we had was, all right, Logan, just hit me. All right, does the Bible say anything about cremation? I thought about this when I saw this. I was kind of thinking about my personal YouTube feed, and I like getting on YouTube for some things, and I learn a lot of things on YouTube, but uh, they've been giving me a credible <laughs> amount of maybe, stuff saying, maybe they think Maybe I'm going to die because you wouldn't need to know. I wouldn't need to know if I was dying. I wouldn't care. <laughs> but no, I've been seeing a lot of things lately on my YouTube feed that literally says cremation is sin, why we shouldn't be cremated and all that kind of stuff. And I just want to be honest with you. The Bible doesn't really say anything about it. Just let you know. No. It doesn't say it. Now, I know a lot of people sit there and say, well, how can God resurrect your body whenever you're, you're going to be in the grave if you get cremated? Well, it's really simple. This body is never going to be resurrected, nor is your body ever going to be resurrected right. because it was formed in sin, and it's a sinful body. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, well, Jesus' body was resurrected, and you're absolutely right, but there's a reason Jesus' body was re He's resurrected. is because, what's that? He's different. He's different, yes. <laughs> he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and the difference is you've been conceived by men and women, and that makes us slightly different. Now, we will get a new body, and that's really cool. And I don't know how God's going to fulfill it all, and that's up to God. He's a miracle-working God. But you don't have to worry about cremation. I've already told her yeah. when I die, I want cremated. Yep. <laughs> you know, I don't need a grave, seriously. Don't come cry in my grave. Just From let you know. From dust to dust. That's From dust it. to dust. And that's where we started, and that's where we go. All right, so what's the next one? I don't know how to begin an earnest conversation speaking with others about Christ and not scaring them or them thinking I am loony. <laughs> well, most of the people you talk to about Jesus are going to think you're loony. I, I mean, I don't know. If you're loony, you're loony. That's, that's God made They God never made think you. I'm loony. They think you're loony, but not of me. Of course. Yeah. Not me. Not me. No, no but seriously, um, and I think a lot of this comes from in the late 90s, I think it was, there was a program called Contagious Christianity. Um, when I pastored my first church, I got it and I asked people, how do you make a church grow? And they said, well, you knock on doors and you invite people to church. Yeah. So we went door, I went door to door evangelizing. That's what it was called. It was door to door evangelizing. And I found one or two people that went with me and we did it. It is the most uncomfortable thing you've ever done in your life. Because how many of you so want awkward. someone to knock on your door and talk to you about coming to church or Jesus? Anyone? I one mean, person. As a Christian, I you're loony. Mind, but <laughs> That's why you're already <laughs> here. <laughs> Just why you know. But no, most people don't want you to do that kind of stuff. And and Bethany, you can tell them your story oh, about yeah, college. Absolutely. So I was a teenager in the nineties and our youth group would go on blitzes. So I lived in I grew up in Maine, right near the beach, and we the whole youth group would go to the beach. Now you have to understand something about Maine. They're smart but they're dumb. <laughs> All right, they're highly educated, but highly totally educated. not in touch with anything spiritual. That's what I yeah, mean by dumb. It, it is true. And we would just walk around the people at the beach and start a conversation like, hey, do you know where you're going to go when you die? <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is How many would like that on and, your vacation? Yep. Um, I know you would. <laughs> most people Looney. were like, see ya. 
You know, like, they didn't even answer, honestly. They weren't open at all because I was just a stranger on the street. You know, I had no relationship with them. They really didn't care what I thought about heaven or hell, honestly, and they just walked away. I'm not saying God can't use that, but and it's definitely honest, not the, the best approach. It isn't. If you look around in this room right now, if you're here, you're probably here because someone invited you or told you and you had a relationship with them, right? Yes. Absolutely. And they invite you and you trust their judgment and you come and you find out, I really am the best looking pastor around. <laughs> and it's just, you're like, you're right, he really is. I just never <laughs> thought that was really true, but it's really true. So you find that out and it's really awesome. No, I'm kidding. But anyhow, you do it because of that relationship and, and knocking on someone's door is not, it did work in the 50s and 60s because everyone sat neighbors. on their porches. <laughs> yes. I mean, we were a different society. It was commonplace. That's why if you go into like a town like Vandergrift, I'm, anyone in here live in Van Vandergrift? I can guarantee your front porch is bigger than your back porch, <laughs> unless you added your yeah. back porch, yeah. because everyone wanted to be on the street, and they went out, and they sat, and they waved to the neighbors and stuff like that. Everybody How many know neighbors. now that if you buy a new house, the front porch, I built them, is small, and the, and the deck porch. behind it is big. Yeah. Why? Because you hate your neighbors. We want to see our neighbors. And we, so, like, <laughs> d we're the same way. We just we built are. a back porch, and we put up this big privacy wall. <laughs> <laughs> I did. We really didn't want to have I wanted to, to see, see our the, the woods, the and I didn't porch. want my neighbor's windows were kind of over there, and their house is <laughs> angled weird, and they can see it's on my true. back porch. I'm like, if I want to walk out there in my skivvies, I can. Yeah. Just let you know. So it's, it's all good. But anyhow. <laughs> All right, so culture has changed. Culture has changed, and therefore we have to change, and that's why we as a church do a lot of the outreach events we do, and why yes. we do rock climbing, and why we yes. do all those kind of things. And yeah. if you're new and you don't know this, we're going to have axe throwing this year. We're going to put in axe throwing, <laughs> and we're going to do axe throwing, and we're going to throw hatchets, and, and we're going to have volunteers to have apples in their head, and it's going to be so exciting. And we're going to have 911 on speed dial. It's totally really good. It's going to be awesome. No, I'm just kidding, just yes, kidding. But, so what we're doing with outreach is giving everyone in this church an opportunity to be out in Absolutely. the community and meet people and have conversations with people. And then when they are invited to come to church, they feel like, oh, I already know those people. In fact, someone walked in this morning and we were like, hey, did we meet you at the park? And she was like, yeah, we were at the park. So how cool is that? Like, we love seeing that. Yes. And people come to Christianity first through relationship, through community. community. And then we have that opportunity to tell them about the love of Jesus where their heart is open and God has been preparing that Absolutely. soil for the seed to go in instead of the seed just being thrown on the rocky ground. Yes. Where it's just and if you haven't it. heard this, you will about us. We're a cult. <laughs> yes, and that's, you'll that's get that heard a lot. I mean, people will say we're a cult theme. because we use rock climbing and all that kind of stuff. But really what we do, and people haven't been here, is we do it to make community yeah. so that you can hang around with people. And it's really cool, like in the winter months, especially when we do the fun center, mm -hmm. people come in, oh, I ought to come to church. Well, they walk in and they already know 20 people in our church. Yeah. It's like they're not even strangers. They they're like, oh, yeah. I know you. And the yeah. kids know each other and they all run around and know each other. And it's really cool. That's why we build the community that we're trying to build in every church that we're doing and everything we do. We want to build a community Absolutely. and not just knock on your door and say, do you know Jesus? Or where will you go when you where die? Where will you go when you die? <laughs> well, I'm not planning on dying today, so I'm really not worried about that right now. But when I'm thinking about that, I'll be ready. But anyhow, that's why we do that. All right, give me the next one. What's the next one? Grace and mercy, this person asked about. I'm trying to dig more into this and understand it. I've had someone ask me, what if I'm not going to make it to heaven? What if I am doomed for good? I thought about that. Good news, you're not. Good news, you're not. No one is doomed. If you're here this morning, you are not doomed for good. I just want to let you know that. You're alive. <laughs> yeah, most people who feel this come from or were exposed to religion. And I hate to say that, but religion really tries to scare people. What are you going to do when you die? You know, I grew up as a little kid in the 70s and 80s, more 80s than 70s. But anyhow, I remember that Jesus was coming. That was like the big push. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Well, we're now 40 years later, and guess what? He ain't come yet. And he is coming. Don't get me wrong at all. He is coming. But the key is you can't scare people into relationship with God. And that's what we've got to understand. And you've got to realize something. You're not doomed. All of sin and come short of the glory of God, but Jesus is your advocate always. And it doesn't matter how many times you screw up. God said, I love you, and I'm going to pull you out. As long as you're trying, I want to say that, because 
there is this point where I have to be doing something. I can't just say, well, God knows after all, you know, that's just my bend and, you know, I'm just this way. No. God said, and this is one of the things that I always try to tell people about our church, we love everybody, but we are never going to let you leave the same. Because God is a God of transformation. He doesn't want you stuck. He doesn't want you to be an excuse and just say, you have to understand, uh, one of the things I cannot stand is, I'm probably get someone mad at this, but it's okay. I don't like a lot of the drug and alcohol programs because they teach you to say you're always an addict. You're not. God said, I make you a new creature. Old things are passed away. You were, but when God makes you a new creature, you're a new creature. You don't have to be an addict anymore. You don't have to be those things. Well, what if I slip up? Okay, you slipped up, but that doesn't make you an addict. That makes you a slip up, right? And everyone in this room is a slip up. I just want to tell you straight up, we're all slip ups. That's why we're in the misfit island. Yes. Bless God. All right. So it goes on a little bit. And is there an unpardonable sin is the next one that kind of goes with that. And yes, there is an unpardonable sin. But I can tell you this this morning, you didn't do it (laughs) or you wouldn't be sitting here. And I want to say that to anybody when we're reaching out to him. The unpardonable sin is really the best example is found in Matthew 12, 22 through 32. And Jesus is literally driving out demons, healing the sick, doing all kinds of miracles. And the religious people walk up to Jesus and say, what you're doing comes from the devil. Wait, who said that? The religious people. Oh, the religious people. Scribes, Pharisees, priests, (laughs) Sadducees. All right? The same ones who crucified Jesus. It wasn't the prostitutes, it wasn't the drug addicts, it wasn't the thieves, it wasn't all that that killed Jesus. It was the religious people that killed Jesus. Never forget that. That's why me and religion don't like each other very much, because the religious people. And he sits there, they said that he was doing it by the power of Satan. Beelzebub is what the name they use in the Bible, but it really is Satan or wickedness or darkness. The reason they were saying that is they knew, everyone say they knew. They knew that he was the son of God because they knew all the scriptures. They knew who he was, but they also knew that if he was the son of God and he was here to deliver them, they were going to lose their position. That's the sin. So because they didn't want to lose their position, they said he was of the devil so that the people would be scared away from him and stay doing what they were doing because they didn't want to lose their position because they knew when the Messiah came, it was going to cause a new kingdom to come. And they were part of the old kingdom, which was temple worship and all the sacrifices. And by the way, they had added on so many laws and things there. They didn't want to hear anything about grace and mercy. No, they didn't. They wanted everyone to follow all their laws. And so when Jesus comes along offering a salvation by grace, and mercy. And mercy, you know, their whole lives are yes. being If you don't believe that, down, there was a day where work. they <laughs> caught a woman in adultery. Right. Always amazed me they caught a woman. Last time I checked, it takes two people to commit adultery. <laughs> yeah. What happened to the Everyone guy? get that? But they where caught a go? woman in adultery. It literally says that in the Bible. We caught yeah. this woman in adultery. <laughs> and they threw him in his feet and says, the Bible says she should be stoned. What say you? And he says... <laughs> And he ignores them, and he begins to write in the dirt, and he looks up and says, whoever is without sin, cast the first stone. And I really think he was starting to write names, places, dates, <laughs> colors of their hair, thoughts, oh, you know, list. all the things. And it says one by one, they disappeared. And Jesus just kept on writing. He looked up and said, hey, where's your accusers? And she says, I don't know, my Lord. Why? Because they found out they were guilty too. And that's why he said, who's ever without sin, cast the first stone. And they didn't like that. Jesus made religious people look really bad. He did. He did. And I'm glad he did. So (laughs) that's what the unpardonable sin is about. You have not committed it. I just want to tell you that straight up. So tell the devil he's a liar, kick him to the curb and say, I'm redeemed by the grace and mercy of God. Yes. So grace is God's gift of salvation to you. You have not earned it and there's nothing. You don't deserve it. to, To get it. But he says, guess what? I love you. Yeah, exactly. And mercy is, I should give you judgment, but I'm not going to give you judgment. I'm going to set you free. Instead, hey, I got a really good one for you, okay? If you ever get a speeding ticket, yeah. this is how you get out of them. It's worked every time. It right? works no, no, too. not with the officer. You're stuck. But what you do is you write the thing, and you sit there and says, sign if you're not guilty. And I never sign it. I send it back to him. I get my hearing, and I walk in. They say, are you guilty? And I said, he said he clocked me that. He did. But I'm just here to ask for mercy. (laughs) And you know what? It's worked every time. (laughs) 
It's true. Uh, it really is. Why? Because I was fully speeding, but I wasn't paying attention. Now, if you're an idiot and you're speeding, you're going 90 mile an hour, I'm you nervous. deserve a ticket. Don't you dare try my yeah. theory <laughs> because it's not going to work because I hope the cop says you're a jerk. Get out of here. We're not letting you do that. All right. But no, seriously, it, it works because, you know, how many people ever got a speeding ticket because you weren't paying attention? Uh, yes. <laughs> how many in here got a speeding ticket? So yes. that, a lot of you were doing it on purpose. <laughs> I see how you go. That's all I can say about that. Yeah, we won't get into that. But okay, let's get to the next slide because we've got to get off that Quick. subject. How does stuff that supposedly happened in the Old Testament relate to the crappy stuff we deal with today? All right. I thought that was interesting. And I have supposedly highlighted because the, this question was basically asking whether it was fictional or whether it was real or it was just something the pastors preach and all that kind of stuff. And it I want to go. It is real. The Bible is real. Absolutely. It says and it was written by holy men of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's in First Timothy 3, absolutely. 16 and 17, I think. And it says, what does it do for us who scratch, crawl, and fight to survive? And it's really cool. First Corinthians chapter 10, 11 actually gives what it's for. It says this, very simple. These things happen to them as examples for us. Referring to the Old Testament. Old Testament, like that yes. That's scripture. what he's saying. And he goes on and he says the next line, he says, they were written down to warn us who live in the end of the age. That's us. That was Paul. That was Peter. That was James. That was John. The end of the age started when Jesus ascended into the heavens and sat at the right hand of the Father. So that was the end of the age. So it, it is there to let us know that if you read the Old Testament, people aren't perfect. <laughs> and if you study, I mean, David celebrated in Sunday school, if you ever went to Sunday school and everyone talks about him in all the Bible books, David was a... He was pretty screwed up. Yeah. I'm he just telling you, he did some pretty bad times. things in his life. Caused a lot of people to die. A couple, what, I could say tens of thousands he oh, caused definitely. to die. Yeah. But you know what? God forgave him and God called him a man oh, after yeah. God's own heart. Yeah. How many know when you kill a couple, well, actually killed, caused to die, 72,000 yeah. people in one place. Another one, it's not really tells us the exact number. And yet God calls him a man after his own heart. Why? Right? Why is that? Why how is could, that? How could he be a man after God's own heart if he committed all those sins? Because of his attitude, and he always humbled himself when he got caught in sin. Do you ever meet someone who you catch them in a sin, and they try to talk you out of how they really didn't do it, and what you saw wasn't really what happened, and it's really not going on? Okay, that's called a liar. Mm -hmm. All right, that's called somebody who doesn't want it. David always showed us, this. if anything, I learn about the story of David, he shows us how to repent. Absolutely. And, and how songs, to humble himself. The Psalms cool are all about that. Of that. And he gets mad. He has a lot of feelings. So. And it cost him a lot. It cost him his family being divided, his son being killed, his daughter being raped. I mean, yeah. there was a lot of craziness that happened because in his, his family sin. because of his sin. <laughs> and the it was because of his were sin. Still there. Yes. But that's how you do that. And that's how you get through that. And that's what it's written for. Uh, you can go to Noah. How many know Noah was kind of a mess? Yes. You don't think it was a mess? Right after he got off the boat, he got drunk. Right? I'm just telling you, read your Bible. Noah was a drunk. Okay, he got drunk. Well, I'm just telling you straight up. He planted a vineyard and, and bad made things bad things happen. <laughs> I could go on. How many of you ever heard the story about a guy named Samson? Oh, yeah. yeah. Supposedly the wisest man ever on earth had like 700 wives. Oh, That's not very Solomon? wise. That was Solomon. Samson not also very had. wise. One is enough. Just telling you straight up. Oh, hi, honey. I didn't know you were standing there. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wives are a good thing, but I can't even imagine. Can anyone? No, I'm not going to ask that question. Let's go <laughs> to the next one. I don't want to dig that any hole any deeper. Since we have been learning about walking in faith, I'd like to know more about how God wants us to walk with, with our families. All right? And then they kind of went a little bit deeper with it, so this is the deeperness of this question. Ready? Ready? Ready, Logan? Ready? Logan, Ready? Specifically, family members with addiction or, or narcissistic traits. Do not raise your hand, but you know how many know families get screwed up? <laughs> you might be the screw up. Well, just yeah. telling you straight up, and it's okay. I mean, but you God's might be good. the only person in your family following Jesus. You Maybe might you're be. here by yourself today because everyone in your family thinks you're the loony person Absolutely. who follows Jesus. Or maybe you are the screw up that all your family prayed for, and here you are sitting today. Hey, Thank God he's good, too. right? That happens too. <laughs> We're all there, all right? So it goes on. How can one continue not to carry the burdens of others and remain empathetic 
while holding strong boundaries to follow God and his, his faith through difficulties as they come. I think every family, if you live long enough, is going to have this issue where there's going to be people in your life or people in your family or extended family who are going to be like that, who learn how to take advantage of people and to do things. And, and it's a real question. So I highlighted a few things that I thought were kind of Im- important. And this is empathetic while holding strong b- boundaries to follow God. Whoever sent this question, I don't know who it was, because I don't know most of the people who sent the question. I gave them so all good. to him with no names Yes, on they're them. in pictures. <laughs> so just let you know, I don't know who you are. But really, you're really screwed up now. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean no. that. It was no. a really good question. It was a good question. But I was glad that I saw this person, they're empathetic while holding strong boundaries. That is one way that you do this. You have to have boundaries. Because if you've ever dealt with people like that, I'm going to change, 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 and they never change. And they keep on playing on your emotions. Well, if you're a Christian, you would give to me. If you're a Christian, you do this. No, there comes a point in time where you have to set a boundary, and it is, to follow God. And sometimes that means cutting that person out of your life. Now, Maybe for a season? For a season. It doesn't mean you don't love them because how you win this battle is really, honestly, is love. And by loving that person and letting them know that there is somewhere, but at the same time, you don't feed their addiction. You don't feed their anger. You don't feed their bitterness. You don't feed the abuse. You don't feed those kind of things. And, you know, I think the Bible is very clear on that kind of stuff and talks about that a lot where, you know, we need to have that boundary and understand that, you know, I loved you and I'm a Christian, but it doesn't mean you're going to take advantage of me. And it doesn't mean you're going to do that kind of stuff. You know, one of the things we don't do very much as a church is help people in need. I used to do that a lot in my last church, and it was amazing. We'd help someone in need, and suddenly my phone would ring three more times that week because I was now on the circuit. And I hate to say that, and if you don't understand what I'm saying, it's just amazing how that everyone connects, and hey, this church gave me this, and if you call them, and I'd get another phone call, and another phone call, and another phone call. We don't feed their habits. We love them enough to put a boundary and say, this is hope. This is the way it's supposed to be, um, mm-hmm. and it's just the way it has to be. Yeah, so we don't give money. We give We do food. not. We, we give food. We always try to offer food if people are asking for that, um, but... We don't. And we try very hard not even to give food gift cards because how many know you can take your food gift card now and trade your food gift card in for cash? Or you right? can buy alcohol or, with it. Yes. Okay. So That's we try hard to fix that and keep that there. And So I, I have a question. Sure. So what if there's someone in my family who says, they're, I'm getting better, um, can I come live with you and get up on my feet again? I'm thinking of an addict or an alcoholic or someone who's like in recovery. Can I come live with you? Will you help me? I would have to see proof in the pudding if the proof was in the pudding. (laughs) And what's asked me what proof in the pudding is just because you go to a 30-day or a 15-day rehab does not mean you're better. If you've ever dealt with addicts, um, I've had addicts in my life, and I put them through 13-month programs where they came back out and went and became an addict again. So it has to be more than anything else, the deliverance of the Holy Spirit moving in our lives where God sets us free and our lives are radical changed. And I really think you can find that in somebody's life. But I'm just going to say this with all my heart and all my soul. I'm not too big a fan of letting adult people come back and live with other adults. I think at a point in time, and especially in America, there's so much out there where you can find a road to get out of it. And we even have people in our church that we know that we can connect people with and yes, stuff like that absolutely. to do that kind of stuff. So I would be very hesitant to ever let anyone come back and do that kind of stuff. Especially if you have kids at home. Yeah. I would say. Protect them. Yes. You're the parents. That is Protect your boundary. Them. And you're, if you're raising young kids. And I say that from experience again, and I've had people in our church that have let their addict brother move in and they stole from their kids piggy banks. Seriously, I mean, that stuff happens, and I mean, it's terrible it happens, but you have to realize they're dealing with something that is controlling their life, and until they, God really touches their hearts and their lives, yes, it's a battle, but Jesus is the answer, and I thank God yeah, that I know a lot of addicts that are free. And we're not giving a blanket recommendation either. No. Like every, situation every situation needs different. prayed over and <laughs> yes. sifted through the Word of God, yes. right? That's what we're supposed Absolutely. to do, is sift it, right? All right, so what's the next one? I heard it said you continually pray for something you are not trusting God and you are operating in unbelief. I like that one. That was actually a pretty good question. All right. (laughs) 
In other words, you should pray once and believe God will answer. Okay? Is that right? And I like that. And that's really an interesting question. And here's the answer. I think it depends on the individual spiritual level. And I think it depends on what it is. Absolutely. Because there's some things in my life that I know I pray about. And when I seek God and God gives me the answer, I start thanking God for the answer because he's given me that knowledge in my spirit through the Holy Spirit. And he says, I'm going to take care of it. And this is how. My job is then to walk in obedience in that place, right? I, I compare a lot to little kids. And I've said this a lot. If you have a little kid and you sit there and you say, I'm going to buy them a gift and they keep asking for that gift over and over again, how many of you want to slap them? <laughs> All right? Just honest, you do. But if they sit there and you say, I'm going to take them a gift and they say, when are we going to the store? Because you said you're going to give me a gift and I'm really th happy that you're going to buy me a gift. How many know that's a whole different attitude? Right? Now, if they walk up and go, when are we going to the store? You said you're going to buy me a gift. I'm never buying them a gift. Right? <laughs> I had kids, too, and, you know, it's amazing how the stores set you up, right? <laughs> like you have to walk down the aisle with all the candy and all the things, and I've noticed they're getting longer. <laughs> like I go to Ollie's or somewhere like that now, and it's like you walk down, like, from here to Shannon through all kind of things. You Toys turn the and corner, candy. and there's another whole lot. Of, it used to be when I was a kid, it was about this long, and my mom just gave me the look and said, don't ask. I knew that meant don't ask, Okay. But I remember when I had kids, it was kind of interesting because I didn't want to be that kind of parent. I just looked at them and said, all right, we're going to the store. Don't ask. <laughs> and always when I would do that, if they didn't ask, I would say, hey, you want to grab something? Grab something. So they learn from experience. And they learn from experience. <laughs> and I think that's a lot like God, too, with us in our lives. But anyhow, um, more than that, deeper with that with God, there are some things that I think you have to pray for a lot of times. One of the things that I pray for constantly, and Bethany, I prayer walk, and we prayer walk so far, and then she turns around and goes back home, and I go a little bit further, and I walk back and pray my time, and she prays her time. So we basically have our family prayer time, and then we have our, our individual. personal individual yeah. prayer time that we pray things about. That's how we set up our prayer life, because she wanted to walk with me, which was one of the things I wanted in a wife, was somebody who wanted to pray with me, because prayer is powerful. And I realize if I meet, oh, someone's going to get mad. I love you enough to say this. If you tell me you don't pray, you don't really want to change. Because I think prayer is one of the biggest changing things in your life. Because when you get alone with God and you pray, God deals with your heart and deals with your life. And I found a lot of things in my life when I think Bethany's wrong, it's me. Although there are some things that I get to pray and ask God to change her about because she's wrong. And I really <laughs> celebrate those moments and I ask a lot. Oh, sorry, I and, didn't say and that. And I usually do say I was wrong. When did you say that? I heard <laughs> many kidding. times. She does say she was wrong, but I just had to throw that out there. All right, what did you say? You say what? I was wrong. One more time. I was wrong. Oh, isn't it good to hear that? Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> okay, now say it. You, it's, it is being recorded live right here. Oh, I love you, Go honey. Back. You're so awesome for playing games with me. She's so blessed to have me, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> so, now, now you know why Bethany's prayed for a lot, so yes, pray for her because she's married to me. <laughs> but no, seriously, there's some things that we pray about that, like, and I used this example in the last service. I was praying about whenever God blessed us, giving us Shalakta and giving us Vandergriff. Yeah. Actually, gave us Vandergriff and then Shalakta. Mm -hmm. And I was praying, and I, I've been a contractor. I know how much it costs and how much work it takes to do. And I was like, God, we can't afford this, and we can't do this, and how do I do this? And yeah. I went to God, and I started praying, and God said, this is how I want you to do this. So you do this, and I'll do this. And I'm going to present that. We're going to get deeper in that a little bit later on in life, not today, but sometime in the future. Yeah. And now, if I would sit there and go to God and say, God, we're really running low on money, I, and God, would you send more money? I would be wrong in asking that because he's already told me the how. So I need to thank him and praise him and walk in that obedience. Does everyone understand that? Because I have the how. Now, there are some things in the Word of God that God already gave you the hows. I mean, yeah. he tells you straight up how to have some of your prayers answered, right? Mm -hmm. And he tells you how to do it, and you can read the Bible. And I'm not going to sit here and explain it to you, because if you know the Bible, you look at the Bible, and you can what you're going through is not abnormal, all right, what you're going through isn't something special, that it's just you. There's no temptation except that which is common to mankind. Everyone got that? Common. So common. Everyone say common. Common. 
common. You know, the devil loves to sit there and say, you're the only one going through that. Well, first of all, he's a liar and throw that out right now because you're not. Everyone has that problem. And here's the really cool part. It's addressed in the Bible. Either in the Old Testament or New Testament, it is addressed in depth, either through somebody living through it, like David, or like Ahab, or like Jezebel, or like a lot of other people in the Bible, of what not to be, of Samson, of Delilah, and I mean, there's a lot of stories in there that not all, everyone in the story is a good person, but they've lived through it, and it's for your example, so that you and I can walk through it and live through it, right. and we can be there and know that it's true, and that it's God's word. That's so what that which, Old Testament was. things do you keep praying about? Um, there's some things that I pray about a lot. One is wisdom. Yes. The Bible tells me if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives freely to all mankind. All right? I say all men. I say mankind because everyone's like, well, it's men. No, men is that word is human. Okay? Just let you know. And that's why you need to look at your scriptures and go deeper to figure out what I was talking to, a man or to mankind or yeah. to a woman. All right? And there are only two, just let you know that. But anyhow, so as you're going through that and you look at that and you go with that, God says if any man lacks wisdom. Does everyone understand what wisdom is? So you have knowledge, which is something you know. Wisdom is how to take what you know and how to apply it. All right? I showed you a picture of, uh, of Shalakta of taking the wall out and stuff like that where I was sitting there going, I've only ever removed one block wall in my entire life where I've cut into a hole. I've built tons of stuff, but I've never done that. And I'm like, okay, God, how to do this? And God said, this is how to do it. So I went and did it, and it works. Why? He created the heavens and the earth. Everyone got that? Well, if he's created the heavens and the earth, don't you think he can give you wisdom on how to handle the project of what you're doing? And I learned that young. I, I remember working on, I was working for Xerox Corporation. I got hired with them, and they were, and I worked on complex pieces of equipment. I used to stand there and go, God, I have no clue. And I'd pray about it, and God would say, change that sensor. And I'd be like, but that sensor doesn't make any sense. I remember one time in, in, in a spot that I did that, and I pulled that out, and I changed it. And I was actually on the line with engineering previously on this piece of equipment that I was working on. I was the specialist. And I was like, okay, how do I fix this piece of equipment? And I'm standing there, and I changed the sensor. It wasn't even in the plan of how it should work. And I called engineering. I said, I changed this sensor, and I fixed the problem because we always reported it so they would be in the database for the next, next person, person who calls in which is what you wanted, yeah. and he looked and he's like, oh man, in this one thing it is in that, and God showed me how. That's wisdom. Everyone get that? Mm -hmm. So God gives his wisdom. God wants to do that. We should be praying every day. How, wisdom of how to do with your husband, with your wife. She needs lots of wisdom. Pray for her. Absolutely. All right? I do. <laughs> not not don't, to don't. deal with me is what I mean, not to deal with herself, right? Um, we one, need that. One thing we pray for all the time also is our kids. Absolutely. So our kids are all adults now, and none of them are following Jesus. So It doesn't mean they're, they're not saved or Christian. They're not following, following where we know God has called Jesus. them to follow, where they've confessed to us where they're called, but not being where they're supposed to be. Does that one make sense to that? No, we have both. We just we were married nine years ago, so we both had our own separate kids, got married, our kids are all grown. Uh, we raised them to know Jesus, to follow Jesus. Like we put in the hard work when they were little kids, but we keep praying every single day. We believe, yep, we're believing that God is going to take what they learn and someday he is going to bring them back to follow him. But right now, like we're in the thick of the praying part. We're praying every day a lot. It, and let me them. tell you what we pray. I don't pray to make their life better. I don't make nope. pray their life nope. good. I don't pray in that. I pray God convict them. I pray God put godly people in their life. Let yep. them make friends and put other Christians in their life who mm -hmm. tell them about you and reaffirm that. I also pray, and you won't like this, but there are scriptures in the Bible that says, I have delivered such a one unto Satan that their flesh would be destroyed, but their body or their soul would be saved. How many know it's more important that they get to heaven than it is to have a really good life, right? Yes. I also pray, as in one of the things that God speaks to Job of, he sits there and says, if I speak to a man and he's walking in sin and I give him night visions and night terrors mm -hmm. and dreams to haunt him, <laughs> read your Bible. It's really cool. God talks about a lot of things. You know that? Look, the, haunt them and they turn then I will be merciful to them so I literally pray for my kids God haunt them <laughs> God literally show up in their lives and let them be afraid and let them know these are biblical things when you read your Bible they're in there it's cool I'm not I'm not trying to hurt them I want them to know Jesus I want them to walk with him and Romans it also says that the 
kindness and the sweetness of God leads people Absolutely. to repentance. So some days we pray that prayer, like, God let today something so amazing and sweet happen Absolutely. in them that they only know it was from you. Because they all have that sense of who God is because they were raised in knowing Jesus. Absolutely. Uh, and then we have five grandkids, and we know two of them, but the other three we've never even met. But we pray for them every single day. That's right. And we know two of their names, and one's baby number three. Yeah. Because I don't know baby number three's name, but I call out their names to God. So do I pray about that constantly? Yes. There's some things you, you pray about yeah. constantly. If you're constantly begging God to give you daily bread, well, that's okay, I guess. And, but there should be a point of time where you've trusted God enough that you know he's going to take care of you. Yeah. And you start thanking him for that daily bread. Does that make sense yeah. to everyone? So it all depends on what you're praying for. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm praying, God, give me peace, give me peace, God, give me peace, God, give me peace. I'm not praying biblically because God already said he gives us peace. So I say thank All through you. the Bible it says he gives me peace. So if I'm praying for peace, I'm praying incorrectly because God already said he gives you peace. So what do I need to do? I need to be thanking God for peace. If God says he gives me patience, then I need to thank God for the patience. So all those things, I was praying a lot of times, and this was something God corrected me. I was praying one day, and I was doing a lot. I didn't realize it. Lord, help me to blah, 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 blah. Help me to blah, blah, blah. And God's like, Terry, I already listed that in the Bible that I was going to help you. So why are you asking me to help you? Do it. <laughs> right? It'd be like you coming home, and you're a guy, and your car's broke. Dad, will you help me? And your dad says, I'm going to help you when you get home fix your car. And you walk in and say, will you help me fix my car? Uh, didn't I just tell you I was going to help you? If you're a dad, how many would that make you mad? <laughs> right? You're like, I just told you I'm going to help you fix your car. That's what it does to a dad. Ask me how I know that. Well, I just know. Okay? It's just the way it works out. So we've got to realize that we have a good father. Yeah. And there are some things in the word of God that you're asking God for that he's already promised you. All right? So let's go on and get off that one. It's, uh, i got about enough for one more. Um, maybe two more. Why don't we have people stationed in the church to anoint with oil and pray for people? Um, someone asked that. Well, the reason we don't do that is James 5, 13 through 15. One of the things that I've tried to do as a pastor of this church and of the rock is I've tried to look at my life and look at the things I was taught and try to take them extremely biblical. In other words, I want to, Tony and Janine, um, every year I do a message on cake baking, <laughs> right? Janine's a really good baker, Tony sucketh. <laughs> all right just let you know that i should scream that through the door at him i owe him a few but anyhow seriously and one of the things i make him do is i make janine baker cake because janine follows the recipe and tony's a freelancer <laughs> right and he thinks he can do it better than everyone else and one of the things we do is the end is i bring this cake up there and i show you janine's cake and it tastes really good it mm -hmm. really does taste really good even though Delicious. she has not baked me one in a really long time <laughs> and i pray god convicts her for such sins but anyhow I don't know why I said that, but it's just a movement of God that I felt there for a second. Conviction. Oh. Fall. No, anyhow. So Janine makes this cake that's really good that she hasn't baked me for a long time. <laughs> and Tony bakes one, and Tony throws it together his way, and Janine makes it her way where she needs to bake me one. And it's something that no, I'm just done. Okay. I need chocolate cake, I think is what I'm saying, Janine. Did you get Especially that? Especially since we don't have an oven. Chocolate so cake. Okay, he, good. He hasn't even had any cookies no, for a long time. No, nothing. Sorry Sad. About that. But anyhow. Anyway. So both have the ingredients in them, but what? One's put together wrong and one's put together right. And I want all you to understand that in your lives. That's basically what this is really all about. It's about following the, the direction. So reason we don't pray for people. I grew up in a church where is there any sick in here? Come forward and we'll know you with oil and pray for you. And that's how I was raised in the Pentecostal circle. Well, the Bible actually says, are you hurting? Pray. Do you feel great? Sing. And then he goes on, he says, are you sick? Call the church leaders together to pray and anoint you. Does everyone get that? So whose responsibility is it whenever we're sick? It's your responsibility to call person. for what? Elders or the people who in the church who you know that have a relationship with God and they will anoint you with oil. And what's it say? And anoint you with oil in the name of the, ma of the master. Believing prayer will heal you and Jesus will put you on your feet. Now this is the message version, but this is really really right. In other words, it's our responsibility to ask God in this format that James gave us of how it's done. Now, just because people in other denominations or other people say, well, we always anoint and pray. This is the biblical plan, right? So do you want Tony's cake or do you want Janine's cake? Trust me. <laughs> I want Janine's cake. I hope she gets that. But anyhow, 
I don't want Tony's cake, so don't let Tony bake the cake, all right? But does everyone understand it? You see, Scripture tells us things, but if we don't apply the Scripture the right way, it doesn't work. And then we stand there and go, God doesn't work. No, you didn't follow the directions, right? And if you're a guy, let's just say this, you don't like to follow directions because we always know better than the directions, right? And we try to put things together, and then we get there and say, well, maybe we ought to try the directions. We already know. And worst part of any direction is do not put part A into part D at this time. Yeah. And you don't follow directions, and then you're sitting there for the next 15 minutes trying to figure out how to get part A and D separated without breaking them, right? Yeah. How many have ever done that? Come on, guys. You know what I'm talking about. No. Boy, no. some of are going to have to repent because you I ain't like confessing to, to it. You do. I know. I don't. <laughs> Idea. You didn't know that, did you? I'll follow no. God's directions, but the others are suggestions. <laughs> yes. All right. So, and there's one more thing that and goes with one that more. verse. And we don't like this if you sinned. How many know we don't like that part? Yeah. But you know what? The Bible tells me right there are some things happen in our lives because we're not positioning our lives in the right place. Now, I want to say this, and listen really closely all sickness is of sin. From Satan. Because God never meant any of us to be sick, but when we sinned in the Garden of Eden, guess what? We put curses in our lives, and therefore we're all going to die. Anyone going to get out of this alive? Nope, you're all going to die. Just let you know. You ain't getting this body any further than off this planet. Just let you know that. So I just want to let you know that. So it's because of that. Now God's guaranteed us a new body that will not be sick and all those kind of cool things, which will be amazing. If you want to know what it's like, read Jesus after he came out of the tomb. It's pretty cool. I get to walk through walls. I've tried that before. It doesn't work in this body. Anyone else in here ever try to walk through a wall? Bunch of, there's a lot of you that are not in this today and you are lying and you're going to have to repent. Because I know some of you have face planted in the wall, just to let me tell you. All right? Not on purpose. Not on purpose, no, but it just happens because you're like, <laughs> door. I had a best friend one time. I have to tell you the story because it's really funny. I got to hurry up. But we were in Wendy's, and my best friend, one of my best friends was with me, and we were all like, and this one girl he thought was really cute, and he's like, wham, walked into the glass door. <laughs> there were three of us on the floor laughing and one trying to hide behind us as we're falling on the floor <laughs> laughing. Because there's nothing better than that. That's what happens when you're a teenager and you have fun. But yeah. anyhow. So I think part of the reason that James is telling the church. Now, remember, this is a message. This is to the church. To the church. Not the world, the church. Yeah. Is if you do have a sin in your life and you're going up to someone who's a church leader and you're saying, I'm sick, will you please pray for me? I want to be healed. Then that. Holy Spirit is going to convict of that sin absolutely also and it wouldn't even be wrong for you to say if you were the one praying like is there any sin in your life that you need to confess because I trust me I have had that happen I went to a church leader once and asked for prayer and they were like well James says you should confess your sin so is there any sin you need to confess and I was like uh, uh yeah yeah uh huh and it's not to make people put, put shame it's to so you can How be many healed. Know? So you can be Sin makes us sick, and you might not believe that. How many know people who worry and are depressed are more sick than, in, than other people? Oh, yeah, for sure. That's straight yeah. up. It's a medical fact that's been proven over and over before. How many know depression and worry, according to the Word of God, is sin? Sin. Because I'm not worry. trusting God. It's Pray. lack of faith. Unbelief is sin. Yes. Everyone shake your head yes. Even yep. if you don't come all the time, pretend like you do. Uh-huh, I know that. All right? <laughs> don't look dumb. All right, no, that's no, just kidding. But anyhow, we got to learn that because it is fact that, you know, how many know if you eat unhealthy, it causes you to get sick, you get sick. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a secret. You say, should you pray about things? Everything I eat, I pray that God would sanctify it. Yes. The Bible tells me that it is sanctified through prayer. And I'm a firm believer. I can eat anything. Now, that doesn't mean we have pizza every night no. and all those kind of things, but it means that there's been times and seasons in my life where I did not have money to eat healthy. And all I could do is eat what I had to eat, and I prayed for it, and I stayed healthy. Why? Because God gave me the promise. It's sanctified through prayer. And, oh, someone's going to feel convicted about this. Everything you eat should be prayed over. I mean, if you're sitting there, you ought to be thanking God that he gave it to you because you can say, oh, I work for this. Um, all he has to do is give you a little tweak in your back, and you ain't working anymore. Yeah. How many know that? Mm -hmm. 
Everything we have is something that God blessed us with as Christians. I'm not talking about worldly people. I'm talking about we as a church people who are sitting there and saying, I follow Jesus. I'm walking with Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading God in my life. I want to pray over everything. I don't, we go out to eat, and I don't care if people watch or not. We pray, and we get a lot of people walk up and go, it's really cool to see a couple praying together. Sometimes we even get it's really cool to see a young couple praying together. And we know they're really old. That's all I can say about that. No, just kidding. But anyhow, you've got to realize that. God tells us it's sanctified through prayer. So yes, there's something you should be praying about all the time. And I think we need to teach our kids to do that, to pray Absolutely. and to do those kind of things. Yeah. I guess that's all we're going to have time for. Oh, 10, okay. 15. But also, if God ever prompts you to go pray for someone when you're out and about because do it. they need healing, go do that because that's a totally different type of healing. That's a healing for evangelism because you want that person to experience the power of God and be like, what just happened yes. and how did that happen and then you have an open door to share the gospel yeah that's what the that's bible said when they said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and they shall take up servants and they shall do all those kind yeah, of things that is an evangelistical command where jesus is saying go to the nations this is going to follow you these signs will follow them that believe now it doesn't mean they're not just going to happen out there they'll happen in the church but there's a different set of rules for church than there is out there because I'm just yeah. reaching out to people and praying for people. We want to follow someone who's really kind of cool and good at that, who God's really given a gift. Todd White, I mean, I think he's yeah. one of the coolest evangelist guys out there that you can watch. I was just watching him the other day where he was, uh, went to a Satanist convention or something, and he was praying for a Satanist. I'm like, that guy, I mean, he's nuts. That's he's awesome. crazy, and, and the guy ends up praying with them and, and all that kind of stuff, and he shares his testimony. How many in here know about Todd White? He's a really cool dude. Look up Todd White on YouTube. Yeah. Watch some of his videos. Um, he was a drug addict for years. Mm -hmm. And, and um, when God told him to go start praying for people to be healed, I think it was years. I think he said he, he counted. I think he prayed for something like 900 people or something like that until anyone, anyone got, got healed. healed. But God told him to do it, and so he was obedient. Yeah. And he was a drug addict, and he got a drug dealer in a car and ripped him off, and the drug dealer got out and unloaded his 9 millimeter at him and his car. And he drove away, and, and God spoke lived. to his heart and said, when are you going to start living for me? I took the bullets for you. There was not a bullet hole in his car, and he was never hit by a bullet. And that was like his defining moment where he's like, okay, God, I quit. Then he went to Teen Challenge. Went to Teen Challenge, and God changed his life. And, yeah, God's amazing. I mean, God's doing super. I don't know. Has anyone heard about what God's doing right now in Ohio State? How many have heard about Ohio State? Raise your hand. If you haven't heard about Ohio State, the football players there are like in revival mode and they're preaching yeah. and people are getting baptized, getting baptized. And they gave away 10,000 Bibles in the last week and a half or something <laughs> like that and something God's crazy. like I'm just like how cool is that I mean when the football yeah. players get Jesus the school's going to change I'm just yeah. telling you because they carry that yeah. influence and it's they really do. cool yes. and really amazing so God's doing new things and he wants to do new things in your life I want you to get that and one of the reasons we do these questions and answers, and we haven't done one of these for a while, yeah, but one fine. of the reasons, someone said to me, that was really cool, we need to do that again. Well, then send us questions and we'll do it again. <laughs> I don't mind doing it. You might not like my answers. I will go take it to the Word of God and tell you what God says. I don't always like what God says. Shannon, is there days that you like God, everything God says? There's a lot of days I'll go and say, hard. really? I'd rather he tells Ross to do it first. But Ross <laughs> needs to know about that. He needs to work on that. Not me. But you know what? That's what makes us grow in faith and grow in God. And I just want to tell you something. You can do all things through him. Even when it seems impossible, God's power is awesome and amazing. And I want to tell you this. God puts us in difficult times to give us a testimony and to change our lives. He lets us go through storms. How else do you ever know? One of the coolest things in the world that I think that I learned about when I was a kid was the Coast Guard has a boat that they use in rescues, in rough water rescue. And I don't know if you've ever heard about it, but it's guaranteed that it can roll over four times and not have any damage to it. And I remember when I read that the first time, I'm like, I wonder who volunteered for that. Yeah. A one, two, three, four, yep, good, five, oops. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's, enough. and they're even better now. It's almost an unsinkable boat that they run out and they run in waves. Everyone in it is tethered and strapped in. And I'm just like, I still can't imagine it. But it's crazy, and I want to tell you what, God wants you to be that in people's lives, but in order for them to be able to do that, they have to first trust the equi equipment. And I don't know about you, I, I think back about it, I'm like, I can't imagine being 18, 19 years old and saying, I joined the Coast Guard, oh, we're putting you in this boat. 
It can be rolled over five times or six times. We're going to prove it to you today. How many know that's fun? There's a hurricane coming. We're flying you down there, and we're going to test it in the hurricane. I don't know about you, but I'd be a little squeamish. And you know what? That's how God is in our lives when God takes you into the storm's life. You might be a little squeamish, but if you trust him, I promise you this. And I can give you his word on it. He turns all things to good. My life, I look back at my life, and my life has a lot of disasters in it. But you know what? I realize that God turned everything to good through the power of his name to make me a testimony to you and tell you God never fails, he never leaves, he never forsakes, he's with you always. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, he will give you power to overcome things that you can't overcome. And he'll bless you, and he'll walk with you, and he'll talk with you, and he'll guide you through those storms. And if you're in a storm right now, I want to tell you something. Trust him. He has you there for only a season, and there'll be a day that the storm that you're walking through right now is going to be nothing more than a molehill later in your life. We're going to look back and remember how much you stressed over that storm because now you have been rescued. You're now the Coast Guard boat. You're now in the crew. And you're now like, you know what? And you see the waves coming, you're like, I ain't worried about that, man. I've been in this wave before. And you just go right through it and say, yeehaw. And you start learning to surf it. And you start learning to enjoy it. And you start learning to have fun in life. And, and James God changes you. Because says you find joy in your tri- trial. Absolutely. And your suffering because you know what they're bringing to your life is endurance. That you is endurance. Stand up to the next one even better. That's absolutely right. Would you stand with me this morning? I didn't get to all the questions. We didn't get through all the questions, and it's okay. But I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but you're in that storm. And I want to tell you the hope. Trust them. And I want to tell you, we as a people in this church, all around you are people that love you and people that believe in you. We don't know how the story ever ends, but we know it always ends good. Because Paul said it really basic, to live as Christ and to die as gain. That's a pretty crazy comment when I really process that comment. You know that? And I sit there and I look at it and go, God, no matter what happens in my life, I'm going to be okay. And I want to tell you this morning, if you'll let go and let God and you'll trust him and walk in his commandments, you say, I don't know all his commandments, then walk in what you know for right now and learn and do what is right. God is going to walk with you and God's going to talk to you. And when you screw up, he'll be there and he'll pick you back up. Doesn't mean sometimes he's not going to say, what did you do that for? Do you ever say that to your kids, right? If you ever had a kid, you've said that. I told you, what'd you do that for? I didn't think it would hurt. Okay, now we got that settled, right? You now know walls are hard. We now realize that flying down a hill on a two-wheel bicycle and hitting gravel will wipe you out and it hurts. You don't stop until gravity and inertia say stop, right? And you learn from that. And God's the same way. He's a good father and he loves you. And I want everyone in the room to know that God loves you and he has a plan for your life that is supernatural if you will step into it and if you'll do it. And I just want to pray for you this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray over this congregation. Lord, these people that you've called to be the church. Lord, the people that are online that you called to be the church, to walk with you, to talk with you, to live with you, to serve you. God, you have plans for every person in this room. Lord, it's not by chance they're here. It's not by chance they tuned in. But Lord, every single one of them, you have them here for such a time as this. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that God, you just supernaturally send your Holy Spirit down in their lives. And right now, let them know that, Lord, you're with them. They might have come in here doubting you, wondering if you were real, and God, I just let them know through this prayer right now that, God, you're real, that you know where they are, and you know them by name. And Father, I just pray that you'll do a new thing in their life, and a new thing in their hearts, and a new thing in their minds, a new thing in their spirits. God, let them be encouraged. Let them fight the good fight of faith. Lord, that that wave that's coming at them right now seems so monstrous and so big, but God, there'll be a day that they're going to grab their boogie board and surf on that wave and love you, and serve you, and honor you, and say, look what the Lord has done. And God, they're going to be a testimony and a light to others, that they would know the goodness and mercy of God. And God, will give you all the glory and the honor. Lord, we pray that you'll have your way, that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done on earth as in heaven. And God, will give you all the glory and all the honor. And everyone said, amen. Hey, I want to just tell you this. Jesus loves you, and he thinks you're amazing. And I don't just say that. He really does love you. And he not only thinks you're amazing, he knows you're amazing. 
And if you'll walk in that place, God will absolutely walk with you through the storms. Have a great day in Jesus Christ. Have a great afternoon. Beautiful day. It's not like 89% humidity and 95 degrees. And I hear tomorrow it's going to be a high like 72. I'm liking it. God bless you.